I hope y'all are ready for spooky season. And we're just going to jump right into this. Um, one of our topics, our special mysterious topics that I will be doing for my Halloween series this year is serial killers. But not just any serial killers. I'm from North Carolina, okay? So we're going to do North, North Carolina serial killers. That's what we're going to do. And on this first episode, we're going to be talking about Mr. Gary Michael Hilton, a.k.a. the National Forest Serial Killer. Yeah, so that's what we're going to do. And, of course, I'll put pictures up and stuff. So we're not going to go too much about his backstory and stuff. In fact, I didn't really find too much. I just know that he's very aggressive. And, and there's always some kind of story there as to why serial killers and mass murders, uh, yeah, act the way that they do. So, yes. So, he was born in Georgia in 1946, November 22nd. Of course, I got my notes because your girl, your girl works hard, okay? Your girl works hard with her notes, okay? She works hard, which I'm sure you could look this up yourself too, but just so we're clear, your girl worked hard and took notes, so... Yeah, he's, um, I decided to do this guy first because this is going to be a little bit longer and I'm going to do a couple more as well, but I couldn't really fit any more into this one, I wouldn't think, because this is, a, you know, this one is more of a more well-known case about someone in North Carolina, um, which he ranged on his killing sprees from North Carolina to Florida to Georgia. So we're going to go into that. Um... So yeah, he has four known, four known homicides from 2007 to 2008, and he has about four more, four or five more um, from the 90s that they suspect that he did. So yeah, this is this this is quite a doozy. Um, so yeah, pretty much what happened in in Florida, he was sentenced to death. It, he's got different charges in every state. Um, I believe he'd be 75 now. I didn't actually write that part down. Uh. But, um, yeah, and they got him for first-degree murder, kidnapping, grand theft. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to talk about the victims because, yes, as much as every basic fucking white girl <laughs> who's into weird stuff is into, you know, murder cases and forensic files, yeah, you know, I love a good old serial killer story, but I feel like the victims don't really get talked about it as much. So that's why we're going to focus on them a little more and just not really go into his, you know, backstory too much. So if you want to know it, like I said, you can Google it. So anyway, his first two victims, allegedly, well, not allegedly, I don't mean that word. What's the other word? Um, that they know of, that he did confess to and did talk about, are John and Irene Bryant, who were 80 and 84 years old, respectively. Um, and they were in Horseshoe, North Carolina, which is not very far from me, actually. That's kind of close. Uh, so, yeah. And they went on a hike on October 21st, 2007. So, that's pretty close to Halloween, actually. So, this can kind of go, you know, with the Halloween stuff. Um, so, anyway, they were hiking in the Pisgah National Forest. Um, they had... <clears throat> A maroon Ford Escape, which was parked at Yellow Gap Road, which was near the this where well, that's where they found their vehicle. That's what their vehicle was. So after two weeks of them missing, their family reported them missing. And Henderson at the Henderson County Sheriff's Department or Sheriff's Office. That's actually where I'm from in Henderson County. So. I don't want to say that I remember anything about hearing about this. I might have, but I honestly, I'm not going to sit here and say that I do because I really don't. So, but yeah. But anyway, um, they got a search party about 30 plus people, cadaver dogs and a helicopter even to go, you know, look for Irene and John. Well, they went through their phone records because they found um, her phone and it did show that she did, on the day that they were killed, kidnapped, abducted, whichever one, which I think we know now, but yeah, she did attempt to call 911. Okay, so when we go to November 10th, November 10th, this is almost a month later, 2007, um, 
They found the body of a woman on the Barnett Branch Trail covered with leaves three days later, the state medical examiner's office in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, also very close to me, positively identified the body as Irene, who had been bludgeoned, I'm not really sure how to say that, basically beat the shit out of with a blunt object. I'm not trying to be funny, it's just how I talk. Uh, So... Yeah, then that's when the FBI um, launched an award for $10,000 to anyone who could, like, help them if they could get any leads or anything. So, and also, they did find that off of the credit cards, or her credit cards, or her husband's, um, yeah, $300 was withdrew from, uh, yeah, their bank card ATM in Ducktown, Tennessee. Ducktown. Yeah. Ducktown. I didn't know that was a real place, actually. Um, so, yeah, and then they actually caught the him on surveillance, which we'll find out later is Gary. Yeah, we'll find that out later. So, we're going to fast forward. So, we've already found out that this is Irene, right? We've, we've already found this out. Okay, and this was back in November, right? We're going to fast forward to February the 3rd, 2008, and a hunter named Mark Waldrop discovered a skull in, I'm probably going to pronounce this wrong, but Nantahala National Forest, or Nantahala <laughs> National Forest, off of a road, uh, which we called, they called the switchbacks. I've actually never, I don't even know what that is. Um... So he called the local deputy for assistance where they both found a pelvis and a spine. And just 20 yards from where they found um, the skull of, you guessed it, Mr. John. Mr. John Bryant. What was it? Bryant? Bryant? His last name is Bryant, right? Yes. Okay. I had to make sure because I keep, I get them mixed up with somebody else on here. Um... So, yeah, and so they sent all of this to Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Um, Again, the same place where after two days it was confirmed that that was Mr. John Bryant. So, yeah, that's pretty much uh, those victims. Victim one and victim two. Like, dismembering people? Damn. I don't know, dude. It's okay. We're on number three now. It gets better. Not really. Um, So Cheryl Dunlap, who was 46 years old, and she was from... So we're going from North Carolina to Florida now, I believe. No, we're still... Yeah, we went from North Carolina to Florida. Okay. The timelines. And she was from Crawfordville. Crawfordville, Florida. I almost said Crawdadville. (laughs) Um, So on December 3rd, 2007... Um, she didn't show up for work one day and she had a job at the Florida State University where she worked as a nurse. Um, her white Toyota Camry was found abandoned in north of the county line. Um, then five days later, there was a search party of 180 people set up. All right, let's fast forward again to December 16th, 2007. So this is like a couple weeks later. Another hunter, God, I'd hate to be a hunter. Um, Ronnie Rents. And his dogs discovered a decapitated, decomposing, decomposing woman through the Appalachian National Forest. Yeah. Uh, and it was confirmed. Authorities confirmed that it was... Or the, the people there confirmed that. Um, so authorities announced the search for a suspicious green truck in the area around the time she disappeared, which was driven by a man with a dog who used the ATM in Tallahassee five times from guess what her account got $700 out um and there were some leads that people were talking about that could be him but unfortunately it didn't really match it was they were talking about an SUV instead of a truck so I don't know but it didn't match so they couldn't get him okay and then our last victim that he had was Meredith Hope Emerson, who's 20, who was 24 years old. Just a minute. I said, okay. So now we're going to New Year's Day in 2008. She went on a hike with her dog named Ella along the Freeman Trail on Blood Mountain in Vogel State Park. 
Witnesses saw a man and his own dog following her. And this was several people that said that they saw this man following her. So, I mean... So, we're going to fast forward for two days. And on the third, authorities located her 97 Chevy, Chevy Cavalier. My mom's got one. Or she used to have one of those. Um, in which they found her water bottle, a leash, and a police baton. Further investigation into Emerson's companion was indeed 61-year-old Gary Hilton and his dog, Dandy. And he was known for, um, when they were talking about him, they said that he was known for, like, being really just his vicious temper and acting just really weird behavior and shit like that. So, yeah, that's wonderful. Um, but he often walked his dog on that trail, um, and he was announced as a person of interest in the case and was further interrogated. One day after his announcement, Ella, which was her dog, was found roaming a Kroger parking lot, and but was safely returned to family members. So, at least he didn't hurt the dog. So, I mean, it's still fucked up. You know what I mean. Um... So yeah, then on the 5th, so two more days later, January 5th, 2008, authorities located numerous items belonging to Emerson, i.e. her bloodied clothing, um, blood-stained car seat belt, um, her wallet, her driver's license, um, uh, University of Georgia ID card, yeah, and at a quick trip in Cummings, in Cum Cumming? Yeah, in a dumpster. A dumpster near a quick trip. So, yeah, that's, uh, really fucked up. Um, uh, and then his suspected victims would be Judy, who was 51 from Pisgah, in Pisgah National Forest in 1997, Jason Knapp, who was 20, um, in Table Rock in 1998, um, Rosanna Milani, who was 24, or Miliani, um, and she was from Miami, but was found in Bryson City, North Carolina in 2005. And then this one I thought was very interesting because this goes on a whole different other case. Uh, Michael Scott Lewis, who was 27, who was from South Daytona. He was a South Daytona resident who went missing on November 21st, 2007. So his dismembered remains were found by a fisherman later on in Ormond Beach, packed in black bags that had been thrown in the Tomaha River. And they did suspect Gary of this, but actually the even more fucked up part about it is that his ex-girlfriend was actually convicted of a murder of her boyfriend after Mr. Mr. Michael here. And dismembered him, too. So, they can't really prove that Gary did that one. But, yeah. And and you know what the worst part is? Like, just... Ugh. I mean, it's it's good when people admit to shit. Because then it's not, like, a, gonna turn into a cold case file or anything like that. But, yeah. When, when they um, were talking about Irene, when he was convicted in 2012, he was talking about Irene and John Bryant... He just sat there and talked about how he went... He went into detail and everything about he how he beat the crap out of her and... Yeah, just... I don't know, dude. Like, I personally would not want to know details, but... Yeah, so... There is something pretty scary. Because if that doesn't scare you the hell away from parks and national forests... Because it don't... Obviously, we see here that it don't matter if you have somebody with you or not... Because if they gonna get you, they gonna get you. So, yeah, really messed up. Um, so, yeah, thank y'all for watching. Um, yeah, <laughs> I hope y'all are having a good Halloween season. And, yeah, stay away from parks and forests. You know what they say, there's safety in numbers. So, But then again, you also can't be terrified to never do anything again. So, yeah. But, yeah, um, stay tuned for more Halloween stuff. And I hope that you are scared and ready for Halloween. So, yeah, make sure that you tune in every Monday this month in the month of October for new scary videos. So, yeah, thank you all so, for, so much for watching. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe because it really helps my tiny ass channel. And don't we all love Halloween stuff? I mean, come on. 
Ser that, that, that guy, he... Pff, bye, Mr. Hilton. Goodbye. Yeah. So, yeah, thank y'all. And don't forget to keep it rocking.